All right, so this is Robbie, and this is for gross anatomy class. And um, basically what this section is going to cover is the cranial foramina and the uh, contents of those foramina. And just keep in mind, foramina is a fancy name for hole. I'm um, going to go over this one by one, and um, hopefully you can kind of get an angle on all this. So first off, to orient yourself, uh, this is the skull. That's the front. We are looking from the top down. Um, we're going to start off with the cribiform plate. The cribiform plate, which is up here. Now, you can see there's a lot of little holes within the cribiform plate. Um, and through those little holes is where the olfactory axons would run through. Um, from the olfactory nerve. That's cranial nerve number one. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little bit. There we go. So again, cribiform plate and then the olfactory axons of the olfactory nerve would run through there, which is cranial nerve number one. So that is our first major hole. Um, second, if you go down a little further, would be the optic canal and the only way I'm really going to be able to show you this is by using the pipe cleaner because it's really three-dimensional but the optic canal runs through that hole and then that hole right there and believe it or not the optic canal um, is for the optic nerve so see where my pipe cleaner is running through I'm going to give you this shot as well makes sense right optic nerve that's cranial nerve number two so that's the optic canal. So, so far, cribiform plate um, and optic canal. The next one I want to talk about is the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure. Right uh, posterior, I guess posterior, inferior to where you've got your optic canal is the superior orbital fissure. And although from this view you can't really see it at all, it's a really big hole right underneath this big crest of bone. And I can't get my thing through. It's There we go. Okay. So again, this is called the superior orbital fissure. And it's that big hole right in there that you can kind of see right through on the camera. So through the superior orbital fissure again, uh, we have running the ocular motor nerve, which is cranial nerve 3, the trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 4, and the ophthalmic nerve, which is V1. It's uh, one of the branches of trigeminal. It's the most superior branch. And then lastly, you also have the abducens cranial nerve, uh, which is cranial nerve 6. So lots of stuff going through there. Um, it is a very big hole. Again, it's called the superior orbital fissure. It's right below where the optic canal is. So next one on the list I want to go over is the foramen rotundum. And on here I can't even really fit the uh, pipe cleaner through it. Uh, it's, sorry, the lighting's not great. The foramen rotundum is right there. And hopefully you can see it on this side too. Uh, right there, okay, yeah. So when you're looking at this, you can always pretty easily identify the cribiform plate. Know that the olfactory nerves go through there. Um, going back, optic canal, superior orbital fissure right below that, and then foramen rotundum right below that. And through the foramen rotundum is the maxillary nerve, it's the V2, or middle branch, of the um, trigeminal, uh, cranial nerve 5. So next one down um, is the foramen ovale, which is this guy right here. Foramen ovale, and he houses the mandibular nerve, which is the inferior branch of cranial nerve 5. Uh, which is again trigeminal, so you can see it from this side here too. Next one up is foramen spinosum. It's the third little hole here. 
So again, you've got foramen rotundum, foramen oval, and then foramen spinosum. And through foramen spinosum, it's a much smaller hole, but that is where the middle meningeal artery runs through, and uh, vein as well, a couple other t really tiny things, but um, all we're worried about right now is the uh, middle men meningeal artery. Um, so again, that's foramen spinosum. Foramen lacerum is a much larger hole, and it's very medial. It's on both sides here. And again, that's called foramen lacerum. And it's mostly where uh, cartilage would run through. Uh, we're not too concerned in our class about the other contents right now. So foramen lacerum. Internal acoustic mea meatus or meatus. Um, you know, the way I kind of like to find this part is to find the external acoustic meatus. Meatus, meatus, meatus. I can't say it. Whatever. External acoustic meatus. The internal acoustic meatus is actually a hole right underneath this little crest here. And it's on both sides, of course. Um, and that's the internal acoustic meatus. And it's actually too small on the skull to fit my uh, pipe cleaner through, so I can't really show you where that is, but maybe you can see it from under here. It's right under that lip, kind of where the tip of my finger is. So, internal acoustic meatus. And through that is the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7 and vestibulocochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 8. And that's the internal acoustic meatus. Jugular foramen is a really big hole. Um, and that's right here. And the nerves that are running through there are the glossopharyngeal, which is cranial nerve 9, uh, vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve 11. So again, that's the jugular foramen, and that is a pretty big hole right here. You can see it on the inferior side as well. Um, next up, we've got hypoglossal canal. My recommendation for finding this is if you find the jugular foramen first, because they're very big and identifiable on either side. Just go medial to that, and basically on the inner lip right here is what's called the hypoglossal canal. And that's where the hypoglossal nerve runs through, which is cranial nerve 12. And let's just run a cleaner through there. So hopefully you can see where I came in. where it's running out of. Sorry, it keeps unfocusing. And on the inside, you can hopefully see a little clearer. Let's refocus that. There we go. Okay. Again, that's the hypoglossal canal, which is where the hypoglossal nerve runs through. Um, cranial nerve 12. Lastly, foramen magnum, really big hole. Um, that is where your spinal cord would run through, and that's also where your vertebral arteries would run through, among other things, but those are the big ones. All right, so just a couple other really um, brief things I want to mention here as far as foramen go. Supraorbital foramen. Um, is where the supraorbital nerve and vessels would run through, which is uh, also V1 portion of trigeminal. So supraorbital foramen or notch, that's those we talked about in an earlier video. Infraorbital foramen, there's holes right below each orbit. That's where the infraorbital nerve and vessels would run through, uh, which is a portion of V2. The mental foramen, is actually down here on the mandible. I'm trying to hold this together. <laughs> um, let's see if you can see that. There's holes on each side, and those are called the mental foramen. Um, through those, you have your mental nerve and vessels, which is part of V3. The mandibular foramen 
is actually on the inside of the mandible and there's holes sorry right there and right there and that's called again the mandibular foramen it's a branch of trigeminal nerve which is uh, again v3 or well the v3 branch of trigeminal i should say that runs through there the inferior orbital fissure Remember how we have the superior, which is really the big hole right there? Inferior is right there on either side. So inferior orbital fissure, that's also um, V2 branch of trigeminal, which is maxillary nerve would run through. And then the stylomastoid foramen on the inferior aspect here, what you do is you find the mastoid processes and you find the styloid processes. In between those is a hole. <laughs> that hole is the stylomastoid foramen. And the facial nerve, cranial nerve um, 7, runs through there. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Sorry, I know that was quick. Maybe not quick enough, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, but anyways, hopefully that helps, and uh, peace out.